Hey there everyone! Welcome back. This is my second video. I had intended to do it a few weeks later, but unfortunately I got frustrated with my new microphone not working, so I gave up and am either going to find or try to fix my microphone some point later. But until then, um, I'm using my headphones again and my crappy computer camera. But today I wanted to talk about something um, pretty important to me that's been really dragging me down lately. And this is kind of still the start of the new year. I know we're almost through February, but it does take a little bit of time to get ramped up from the craziness of the holidays and everything. So in my mind, it's still a pretty new year. Um, and I know a lot of people you know, say, new year, new you, yay, it's a good time to start something, and the whole world of possibilities is open. Well, for me, it's been extremely hard to have that optimism when the new year starts, well, started after a devastating fire in a town really close to my hometown. The Marshall Fire was New Year's Eve, and that was a pretty big wake-up call to the mortalities of my existence. And then coming into the new year with cold and dark and everything's dead. It just doesn't seem really encouraging. And on top of that, I'm sitting here in this massive limbo in my creative life where I don't really feel like writing and I feel like every time I do sit down to try to write something, I just write utter garbage, and I'm a ta talentless hack. And I know every creative talks about this, and I'm probably going to talk about this in every one of my videos a little bit until I die, because it's an ongoing struggle that we all have to realize. But today I'm feeling it particularly strong, because I feel like all of my efforts to put my work out there are just met with a bunch of crickets. Like, nobody seems to care that I'm writing cyberpunk, or that I'm writing science fiction, or that I've got these cool characters, or this cool world. And part of that might be on me. Part of it might be that my marketing strategy for, you know, not having a published work is weak. And part of it's probably in my head, and part of it's probably because people are super busy. Um, and part of it might be because I am pulling myself in too many directions. I know I'm trying to build up a following before I actually have a product to physically hand people, which is always hard, and for me, in writing, it's a lot more difficult because I can't do a doodle and offer prints of it, or I can't do a sketch or even a piece of art that maybe, you know, I can't do anything that's short. Um, and not to say that artists in the visual arts don't spend a lot of time on any of their pieces. Um, and I'm sure writers can write super short things and have them pump them out, and it's great but I'm just not that kind of, of writer, and I've been trying to train myself to be such, and it's been rough. My cyberpunk series, I mean, while I am pretty proud that I have written three books in two years, um, I can't do anything with them because they need editing and since one of mine is stuck at the second reader in a publisher, I don't want to put them out on my own because I don't know if that publisher is going to accept me or reject me. And they've, they've been sitting on it since last March, and I'm starting to feel pretty antsy about that whole thing, which I think has contributed to my feelings of depression and lack of self-worth because I feel like they have just forgotten about me. Even though I've had a couple emails saying that they haven't, um, but it's always been in response to my email being like, uh, yeah, guys, um, you gonna 
What's going on? So I don't know. But I'm still a writer and I still want to get stuff out. And I feel like I've only been maybe half-heartedly promoting my cyberpunk world because I don't know what's going to happen to it. I don't know when I'm going to be able to give anybody anything substantial. So instead I've decided to go into a different, a little bit of a different route, still sticking with science fiction, but instead of cyberpunk, I've had this steampunk story bouncing around in my head for a few years now based on a podcast. Well, actually, the podcast was based on the idea for the short story. But in November of 2021, I did a, a podcast with Writers Drinking Coffee about steampunk outside of colonialism so taking steampunk ideas and putting them in a non-victorian non-imperialistic world and what would that look like and how would you do it i've been thinking about this a lot because the victorian era while it seems pretty glamorous and, and intriguing was you know actually pretty crappy like life was pretty terrible for most of most of the population they were super racist, they had these horrible beliefs, medical care was terrible. Um, while, you know, some good stuff did come out of it, there is also a lot of negativity um, and bad stuff that just never gets talked about. So without delving into that aspect of it, um, I wanted to talk about or write about a non-white, non-Victorian steampunk Thing. And I kind of decided to settle on going the halfway point, and instead of, instead of having the Empire be the British Empire, I am thinking of it in more of an alternate history perspective. So what if the Ottoman Empire, instead of losing um, a large battle, they won it? Um, that was a battle in Vienna. I'm not sure it was called the Battle of Vienna, but there was one big battle in around the 1500s that they lost, which I think was kind of where the decline started. Um, but instead, what if they won? And so now the Ottoman Empire was the power for the world, and the British Empire is kind of the ones trying to resist the takeover. Um, due to a series of bad decisions and the death of Queen Victoria. So that's where my scene takes place. And the premise is that there was an alien ship crash landed on Earth. Uh, all inhabitants perished, but there was a piece of technology that came out of it in the 1500s that um, maybe was one of the catalysts to the, the changes in history. So this, the story set takes place in the 19th century, and it features an East Asian cast, a crew of airship merchants that work for the empire, the Ottoman Empire, and a teenage Chinese young man who ends up becoming the engineer on this airship, and this airship goes on a mission to find the pieces and reassemble this piece of alien technology. And my thought was, instead of writing a novel, which is what I'm prone to do because I can't write small, I've decided to try and readjust my thinking of what writing small means. And instead of writing the whole novel all at once, I was going to put it out as individual short stories in a serial. So my thought was to do this via Patreon or coffee subscription where you would subscribe to the where you would subscribe to the, the service and every other month you'd have a new piece of the serial until you had all of them. And and then I don't know what I would do with my Patreon after that. Maybe I'll be so amped up with all my supporters that I'll do another serial of some sort. I don't know. The world's open. It, it could be anything. It could, you know, I don't know. It could be fantasy. Who knows? Um, but I'm hoping 
to put this out as something that maybe could help me make some money to put towards all the expenses of being an author because who knew being an author is really expensive even if you're not publishing anything like I have to pay for my website and the software that makes my website and the other services that I use to write with and use world, for world building I have to pay for um, you know obviously internet and power and if I were to go to a convention sometimes you gotta pay for stuff like that business cards you know buying stock photos if you're gonna make art that you can actually can include so you're not stealing somebody else's work um, there's all kinds of things it's just it's expensive and it's just like so disheartening um, marketing if you get into that you gotta throw some money at marketing uh, depending how much is subjective based on who you talk to but um, but hopefully I can raise a little bit of money at least enough to either market myself if I self-publish um, my cyberpunk novel or to even get an editor and stuff for that novel if this publisher falls through and if that publisher comes comes through then you know, marketing the steampunk series, which once we have all of the pieces of the serial, you'd have a novel. So the ser the steampunk serial that I'm thinking of writing is called Cloudbreaker, and each of the episodes of the serial will have a subtitle as well. So the first one, my working title is Cloudbreaker, Where We Began, and obviously that's going to be like the origin story or whatever. And, um, I don't know, do people like short stories anymore? I know I just bought one steampunk anthology of short stories that feature artists like Paolo Bacha Galupe and Carrie Vaughn and Garth Nix. So, it seems like they're out there. And maybe anthologies are getting more popular these days, which might be a good sign for me. Um, so yeah, so if you guys are interested in something like this, if you think... It's less of a commitment to commit to a short story every month or every other month than it is to read a novel, which I get because time time is you know precious. Um, please leave a comment and let me know if this sounds like something you'd be interested in. Um, and if you have any ideas or thoughts on how the world should work or any cool bits of history that I might have overlooked, um, I'm always happy to hear them. This is a story in progress, but it's definitely far from completed. So there is a lot of room to play, um, and maybe if I were to even do this um, Patreon thing, I could have people write in character suggestions or setting suggestions or whatever um, as part of the membership tiers. So that's my thought. Um, I'm still holding out hope that people care about what I have to say, and I'm still holding out hope that maybe my writing will be seen and enjoyed and bring joy to a lot of people. So for all of you out there, please keep doing what you're doing in this new year. Try not to fall into the same trap I have and feel uh, despondent and without hope. I do think there's probably still hope, it's just sometimes hard to see. So. I would love to hear all of your thoughts and um, definitely also please share any struggles that you have maybe been having this year and if you have any advice on how you've gotten over yours, I would love to hear it to help keep me going through my days. Hope you all have a great day. Bye.